So Shelly has an excellent uh, arm. She's our third baseman. So. Um, it is a real privilege to be here. I want to thank Claire McCaskill for her laser-like focus on this issue. Um, doing the first survey, really focusing her efforts around her state and around the country. I want to thank uh, the others who worked very hard to help draft this bill. Um, uh, Richard Blumenthal and Dean Heller and Chuck Grassley really focused on some of the early drafting that I was very grateful for, along with every senator standing here. Every single person added to this new revised bill to make it stronger. Uh, I also want to offer my gratitude to the survivors and the advocates all who have publicly shared the worst moments of their life so that peers would never have to go through what they've gone through. Some of you will see The Hunting Ground tonight, as Claire mentioned. This is a powerful film. Uh, it includes the story of Annie Clark and Andrea Pino. They have founded a not-for-profit called End Rape on Campus. Uh, they are going to take this call to action, campus to campus, all across this country, and you will hear their story in that film. I first met Annie and Andrea about a year ago when they knocked on my office door, didn't have a meeting, but said, we need to see the senator. Sure enough, I sat down with them, and I cannot tell you how inspiring these two young women are. They are so courageous, as are their peers who have been leading this movement. They're inspiring to me. They're inspiring to other young men and women across the country. And this is their movement. Uh, these senators standing with me here today listened to their stories and are fighting on their behalf. I am very optimistic. Uh, as Senator Blumenthal said, we will pass this bill. Uh, last July, we stood here, outlined our first draft, our path forward to protect students. Um, despite having a legal obligation to guarantee a safe learning environment, colleges and universities have consistently underplayed and underreported campus sexual violence, fearful that their application numbers will simply go down if these incidents become public. We listened to the survivors who spoke not only of the physical assault they endured, but the second injustice, the second betrayal of trust by schools they love. And so we introduced the Campus Accountability Safety Act to basically flip the incentives so that schools for the first time, it is in their best interest to actually solve the problem and to do it aggressively. Today, we're bringing the bill forward because the price of a college education should never be the risk of being sexually assaulted. With the additional input that everyone's discussed here today, we think this bill is stronger than ever. And we believe that as it stands today, the reason why schools are failing is they do not take this crime seriously. They do not take it for the violent crime that it is. Schools all across the country will be happy to withhold your diploma if you didn't pay your fees. They'll be happy to kick you out of school if you cheated on a test. But the statistics for students who have violated other students, who have sexually assaulted them and raped them, only one in a third is actually expelled for that crime. In other words, two-thirds of students who are found responsible for sexual assault are still on their college campuses. What does it say about these school priorities if some colleges have a tougher justice system for a student cheating on an exam than for someone who has raped another student. The Campus Accountability Safety Act will transform the way colleges and universities deal with this crime. This bill, instead of pretending these crimes don't happen, would make sure schools are held accountable for not reporting the actual crimes, the statistics, accurately and publicly. And instead of worrying about a drop off in applications for those numbers, Schools will be considered outliers that their numbers are lower than what other students are actually saying is happening on that campus. That's why these confidential surveys are so important. With this bill, instead of treating accusers and accused with unequal standards, the accusers and accused would have the same access to all due process rights. Instead of survivors feeling pressured to report before they are emotionally ready, Survivors will now be able to wait until they transfer or graduate before the statute of limitation clock starts ticking. And instead of the survivor feeling like she has to go public with the details of the rape just to capture her school's attention, she would now have a, digni a dignified path towards justice without having to broadcast the worst details of her life to the public on the cover of the New York Times. I urge everyone here to keep fighting for the safety and accountability on our college campuses. I know we will pass this bill.